I know that I said I was on my way towards the leopard and hopefully we'll get there before the end of the sunrise safari, but I just had to quickly stop and show you what I was talking about earlier. Remember how I mentioned that Brent had said that this is the buffalo herd with the pink noses? Look, I'm sure that there's quite a few pink noses out there, but there we go. There's a prime example of a very bright pink nose. It's quite sweet, isn't it? <clears throat> and I remember weeks ago when I was still driving around on Juma, linking to Brent with a pink-nosed buffalo. Yes, girl. Your nose is very sweet. <clears throat> Apparently there's quite a few of them with this pigmentation on their nose. That's completely, completely unique. Again, talking about zebra and giraffe and identifying individuals, you can do the same thing with buffalo as well. Especially if you spend a long time looking at the same individuals. Those patterns of black on her nose will be unique to her. They might change, though, over time, just because that particular patch of skin is going to be very sensitive to the sun. And the sun is strong out here. We're quite high in terms of altitude, and of course we're close to the equator. So the combination means that the sun of the UV rays are very, very powerful. Brent has gone several shades darker in the time that he's been here. I'm trying to avoid that by copious amounts of sunblock, but I don't think it's working. Shame, Buffalo. Would you like some sunblock on your nose? I've got some here, if you want. Yes, you should look after that. Mud'll do. Are Lara Moore? Yes, exactly what buffalo smell like. They smell very, very similar to cattle. In fact, almost indistinguishable from the smell of cattle. And often when you go through an area where a buffalo herd has spent lots of time, you find that it smells exactly like a dairy farm. So you are correct. They smell a lot like cows, at least to my, um, to my nose, however distinguishing that might be. Perhaps something slightly muskier about them. They also smell muddy. They smell like cattle, they smell muddy, and they smell like grass. And they're covered in grass and mud at the moment. Oh, here comes another car. Hold on. I want to get off this main road. Have a look at this buffalo over here, Senzel, the one closest to us. Now, Francis, who is watching in Israel, he's going to let the vehicle come past. You want to know about the white patches around the buffalo's eyes and around their noses. All of them have them to some degree, and a lot of that comes from just scratching up against trees, and that's for two reasons. One is scent marking, the other is due to the fact that ticks are more likely to be around those sensitive facial areas, and the only way to scratch those is to rub up against a branch or something like that. Yo, look at the size of this bull's horns. Those must be, I would say, a meter from one end to the other. Three feet. They're absolutely massive. So a lot of that comes from rubbing. You do get buffaloes, quite a few, and you'll see them regularly on our live safaris, both in South Africa and here, with fungal diseases on their skin, occasionally with bits of mange as well. And there you go, you can see patchy, patchy, dried up, scaly bits of skin. There underneath, the top bit is mud, but there at the join of the stomach and the leg, that scaly patch of skin is the sign of some kind of skin disease. I'm still trying to get to Brent's Leopard, but it seems...